So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chris Bruni. I'm the vice president of sales for Security Health Plan. Very happy to be with you once again, um, joined by my co-host, Mr. Jeff Tucker, who is the vice president of business development for the Marshall Clinic Health System. So once again, you're joining our Wednesday webinar series. This is something that we co-sponsor between Security Health Plan and Marshfield Clinic to bring you a, a lot of information about things that are going on, both uh, COVID-related, non-COVID-related, but things that will impact your business. So um, Jeff will do the introductions of our guest today. I'm gonna go through some of the nuts and bolts things first and then hand it off to Jeff to finish that up. So um, again, this broadcast is being recorded. It will be available on the Security Health Plan COVID-19 webpage under the employer tab. All of our past webinars are there as well and you can download them and use them at your leisure. For everybody that did pre-register, uh, Jen will get the um, webinar out to you, uh, the recording out to you as well as uh, the PowerPoint presentation, generally within about 24 hours of the event uh, being finished, which will be up at about noon, uh, 12.30 today. Um, there is a chat and a Q&A feature on the WebEx uh, platform here up in the upper right hand corner. Please feel free to use it. We do want to hear from you. We want to answer every question that you might have uh, about the presentation or stump us, ask us anything today. You know, who knows? Karen's, Karen's a wealth of knowledge. She can answer any question on any topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Jeff, and we'll get rolling. Thanks, Chris. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, today's webinar is entitled Challenge Accepted. How do we keep people engaged in this age of physical distancing and remote work? Um, we'll learn from Karen about strategies for getting and keeping your team engaged, considerations for conducting larger group meetings, and making connections and demonstrating presence during online meetings. Dr. Karen Alta Cruz is the Director of Organizational Development for the Marshall Clinic Health System. She's an experienced executive uh, certified coach and organizational development professional working in the areas of leadership and organization development, learning and development, succession planning, talent, culture and change management, strategic workforce planning, employee engagement initiatives, organizational effectiveness and facilitating organizational change. She has over 25 years of business and nonprofit leadership focused on growing people, teams, and organizations. And I can speak from our own standpoint that she's very active within our organization and in fact has worked with a number of the teams that I work with. And I'm a big fan of uh, Karen. With that, I will turn it over to you, Karen. Great, thank you so much, Jeff, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks thanks for giving uh, me your time today, and I hope that uh, during our 20, 25 minutes together today that you'll take away a, a few nuggets that you can use within your organization. And in addition to that, uh, I am gonna have the, the chat feature open because uh, we would love to hear from you. That sometimes that's the best way uh, for us to learn is to hear what others are doing. Uh, there's a lot of innovative ideas out there, and so it's great to hear from all our colleagues uh, across uh, the nation, across uh, our, our footprint, if you will, as to, as to what people are doing to keep people engaged. As, as Jeff had stated, uh, today really uh, my goal for you is that you walk away with some strategies on keeping your team engaged, how to make those connections and demonstrating presence during web meetings, and then when we think about those bigger, uh, larger group meetings, especially as we start looking at what is work gonna look like in the next uh, year and, and beyond. Uh, there will more than likely be uh, blended opportunities where some people are remote while, while others are within uh, the, the larger organization or together in a group setting and you have uh, people uh, in remote locations and making sure that we're connecting uh, with them as well. Yeah, and the other thing too is that in addition to recognizing that that we have now uh, this this connection that we need to make virtually, uh, we still have to think about you know what are we doing when we're, we're physically distant. And I know I, I I started seeing the clear masks that are coming out, and uh, you know what a great uh, innovative idea because when we think about engaging people, you know yes we can have that eye contact. But there's so much body language uh, uh, around our communication skills, and uh, 
And that's difficult, as we have uh, discovered, when we're in this, this virtual world. And, and uh, the more that we can do to be present virtually and engaging people with our uh, hearts, minds, and, and, and physical uh, features, the better we will be. But then also when we start uh, being together again, uh, you know, how many of us have just, you know, kind of shut down a little bit uh, with our body language. And so how do we uh, re-engage that <clears throat> and make sure that we are aware? And as leaders, that's a big part of it is us not only being aware of ourselves, but then also that that social awareness that's so important. So when we think about when we think about engaging and keeping people <clears throat> engaged in an online environment, there, there's probably some things that are going to be really uh, simple here for you, but I want to make sure that we cover those because they're really important. And then also hearing from from the rest of you, uh, cameras on. This is so important, even if it's just the first part. So some people will say, "Well, I, I don't want to keep my camera on because uh, I don't have the bandwidth." And some strategies that others have used is that at the start of the meeting, when we do our welcomes and our quick uh, finding out what's happening, we keep our cameras on and then those that might have to turn their cameras off will do so. Uh, I encourage leaders that if they do have team members who are uh, hesitant or resistant in uh, putting their cameras on, to have a side conversation with them and, and find out what the root, the root cause of that is and then helping them uh, to get through that. No one likes seeing themselves on camera and and that becomes a distraction. You know, we're looking at ourselves. How do I look? How does my lighting look? And sometimes we have to just uh, let people uh, realize that it's a them being present versus, you know, how do they you know how do they look on camera? And we can give people again tips and tricks on how to look uh, their best and what to do maybe with their backgrounds if they're working from the living room or bedroom. And so there's some strategies there too uh, that that people can work on. Uh, the other thing is that has been really effective for many groups is when they have a team meeting, let's say you have an hour plan, is take that 10 to 15 minutes up front to catch up on personal things that are happening within your team or start the meeting early uh, so people can, can connect. You know, if we think about more than likely when you had meetings in person, people showed up early, they might have grabbed a cup of coffee together and had um, some chatting going on and catching up on personal activities. And as this, this continues to be a marathon and continues to be the way that we are getting work done, working remotely, we need to make sure we're keeping each other connected and that uh, we're keeping uh, connected with our team members. And, and people say, well, we don't have time. We have so much in our agenda that we won't get through it. You know what, you will get through it. Give that 10 minutes because then what happens is people people become uh, more succinct in their answers and, and, and how they're gonna move through the meeting because now they know that that 60 minutes has now been compressed to 45 minutes, but yet it's a more enriching experience. And then use the tools. Uh, Jeff and I were just on on a meeting with a larger group and the facilitator. You know, not only do we use that chat feature, uh, but we use the whiteboard and we use the annotation tools. So as you start embracing this technology, uh, make sure that uh, you're taking uh, people from your teams and that they're learning how to really effectively use those tools and so that they can teach others how to use those tools. Uh, some of the best practices, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, is to have a producer so that if, if you're the person giving the presentation, someone else behind the scenes, and today we have Jen, you know, is taking care of, uh, you know, watching the chats, uh, looking at the Q&A, uh, doing the breakout sessions, all of those kind of things, because then you as the leader, the facilitator, can make sure that you're just focusing on the content that you want to deliver and the time that you have to uh, conduct that meeting. And please, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and, and put them in the, in the chat or the Q&A. And I do have an opportunity here for people to, to also uh, provide us with your input. And purposefully engage. And what I mean by purposefully engage is, is ask questions. Make sure that you're either calling on people, uh, looking people, uh, you know, looking directly in the camera. You know, like I am, my slides are over here and I, I try to know my content as best I can. So I'm only, you know, looking over there a little bit, but that I can engage uh, with the folks, uh, you know, through, through the camera as best I can. Uh, and then call on attendees. And, and this can be really difficult because you have to be okay with the, with the silence. And, and so often what I've seen 
when we start we start working with facilitators on these online meetings is that they'll say uh you know um, what questions do you have or are there any questions or you know put put this in the chat and because they don't see something instantly they think no one is responding and so they start talking and as soon as we do as soon as we start talking uh the people who started putting things in the chat or we're going to try to find the, the uh um the the unmute button they haven't had that opportunity uh so just you know pause ask those questions be comfortable with the uncomfortable it can be five seven sometimes even ten seconds before you start seeing that content roll in or before someone is uh, brave enough to ask a question. So as, as whether it's you or you're teaching someone else these tools, make sure that they just take that time uh, to let people respond. And then also, you know, what are your expectations? So again, call on attendees. If people know ahead of time that they will be called upon, they uh, are, are more uh, apt to pay attention and also uh, uh, um, proactively engage in that conversation. And again, that be comfortable with that silence while you're waiting for a response. Uh, one of the other things is too, is that even though your team might know each other for a long time, there's no reason why you can't bring in uh, different ice icebreaker games. There's a lot of fun uh, things that you can do online. You know, they don't have to be silly. Uh, there's even things, uh, you know, pick a date, you know what happened in your life uh, during that date. Uh, there's different cards. So even though you're not in person, let me see, I don't kind of have my cards handy dandy, but there's little cards that you can pull out with questions. And so even though everybody doesn't have a card, I can pull those cards out. Uh, so I don't have to have a lot of technology in order to uh, engage uh, the, the team members. You can even have a PowerPoint presentation up with different questions and each person has to take one of those questions and answer that question about them about themselves. And just a nice way to keep people connected. Uh, and one thing that I encourage people is, is saying, uh, you know, what questions do you have or, or uh, you know, uh, any, you know, any, are there any questions, right? Because as soon as we say, are there any questions, people usually shut down. So if you can say, hey, what questions uh, can I answer today? Uh, you know, I, uh, here's a question that I'd heard in the past. You know, who else has, you know, a similar question or something different? Because again, it's, it's that uh, way that you phrase it encourages people to participate rather than, oh, meeting's done. Uh, I get to sign off now and, and go back to doing uh, what I was doing. And then the other thing is too, is, is look for uh, outside vendors who can come in and do parties. There's uh, you know murder mystery parties that you can do through Zoom and, and the different technology. There's a lot of different opportunities there where uh, people whose uh, livelihoods were turned upside down because of COVID have become really innovative in what they can do now for team building exercises uh, in a virtual world. And then uh, one other thing, too, is, is send people goodie bags ahead of the meeting. So depending on your budget, how many people are going to be attending the meeting, uh, you can send a little packet of, you know, snacks or goodies uh, to their home or if they're working in their office. You know, it can be uh, sometimes a challenge logistically, uh, but people really, you know, really appreciate it. And I heard a lot of that over the holidays. Uh, and I even did that with my team where we had our holiday party and I, I put together a, a little gift goodie um, bag and, and mailed it out to everybody to their homes. And, and so we had uh, snacks and treats uh, while we had our holiday holiday party. It didn't cost a lot. There was some logistics involved. But again, it was a way for us to stay connected and just, you know, as a society or as a culture, uh, food is really important to us. So how, do, how can we have, uh, you know, celebrate and, and have uh, food and, and lunches together now in a virtual world and so what i'd like to do now is is share in the chat we'll take you know 30 30 seconds 45 seconds is go ahead and put in the chat uh you know what have you found to work when you think about you know the work that you've done with your team members uh to keep them uh engaged so share anything that you have done Karen, I'm going to get the ball rolling here. Um, I, I do know that uh, uh, one of my team members has had a lot of success just using trivia, simple trivia questions um, with uh, with uh, her staff or uh, with our broader team. We did get uh, Ashley from uh, our panelists or for um, 
one of our guests today said uh, breakout groups. So we're seeing breakout groups as as a choice as well. Yeah, Thank, thanks for that, Chris. Yeah, break, breakout mm -hmm. groups. Uh, breakout groups are great. Uh, trivia, having some trivia questions, another another great idea for keeping for people um, keeping people engaged. Uh, if you haven't done so already, I would really encourage you to put together a work from home guidebook. This is uh, just a quick snapshot of what the table of contents uh, looks like for our for our book. Uh, but we talk about logistics. We talk about working from home um, uh, effectively, and then we even put together a, man a manager tips and tricks on how <clears throat> they can keep. Uh, their team members engaged in uh, this this remote uh, work setting that we're on. Uh, you'll see there one of the first things is that cameras on uh, and then frequent breaks. That's really important, and we'll, and we'll talk about that as well. Uh, people need a break, uh, especially when we're on camera all day long. So if there's opportunities again to do a phone call sometimes rather than video, if you've been on video a lot, but then even just the opportunity to take you know a bio break. I say uh, we should be in a meeting for, for any longer than 90 minutes before we give people a break. And, and then people are worried about, uh, you know, the team members not coming back or their audience not coming back. Well, that's, on, that's on us. We have to be engaging enough and we have to have enough uh, interesting content uh, that they, they take that break and they, and they do come back on time. And, and I, I say what you permit is what you promote. So if you're starting on time, you're ending on time, you tell the team to be back at you know 140. Make sure you're back at 140 and you're starting and you're starting um, that meeting as well. It looks like do we have a few comments uh, now from the uh, how people are keeping their, their team members? In we, do. we do. We do. Are you seeing those? Uh, kind of, but I know my glasses on and they're way over. My okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I just Alicia don't... added uh, that that uh, she hosted a holiday party with gingerbread making contest. Mailed everyone a kit with a few snacks ahead of time. That's a great idea, kind of in line with what you were saying, Karen. And then yeah. Alicia said they that they recently did a Kahoot. I have no idea what a Kahoot is, so Alicia, yeah, if you want to add more. I was going to ask, what is that? Um, and then a, a, it was a great time to plan, and this month they're going to do a happy hour. Um, we've done a couple of happy hours as well uh, with, with the staff, especially those meetings. Um, try to keep them right at the end of the business day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no three martini lunches during the workday. But uh, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to because uh, I'm familiar with Kahoot, the survey model. So, so Alicia, if you don't mind, just kind of adding what Kahoot is as a sidebar. I think everyone would appreciate that. So, so thanks for that. Great. And uh, and again, just some of the quick things from our work from home guide. Uh, keeping those one-on-ones frequent and consistent. So if you were normally doing one-on-ones with your team members in person, uh, make sure that you continue to do those. If you weren't doing one-on-ones uh, with your team members, I encourage you to start doing that. Even if it's a 10 or 15 minute check-in with people, just to find out how they're doing. Uh, create you know, cameras on as a norm for you and your team so that we can stay, we can stay connected. Uh, make sure that you're, you're making context statements. Uh, so making sure that people understand, you know, where you're coming from. Uh, because again, it can be really difficult when we're working remotely or people are sending a lot of emails. Uh, let's just make sure that people are understanding, you know, what that intent was or what the context of that statement was. And then, you know, create those de uh, deliberate connections. And, and what I mean with this is, is you know, again, if I'm gonna have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my team member rather than jumping right into that agenda or the task that they have to get at, you know, I wanna, you know, hey, how's how's it going, Steph? How was your weekend? Oh, hey, I noticed you have a new picture in the background. Uh, you know, tell me more about that. Or, uh, you know, um, you know, how, you know, what's going on with your camping trip? You know, plans. You know, are you gonna be able to go camping this year? Whatever it might be, uh, just again to make those personal connections with folks. And then define success. What does success look like for someone who is uh, working remotely and, and for your team? And what does success look like for, for having online meetings? Karen, we have an update on the Kahoot. So okay. apparently it's a, it's a game website that uh, offers fun topics like movie trivia, music trivia. Uh, everyone who participates casts their answers through their own device, tracks with a scoreboard. Uh, it's really fun. Kahoot.com is what uh, Alicia said uh, people could look at. 
Sounds like you could combine that um, with, with the happy hour and it might even be more inter- entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'll have to, I'll, have to go out and, I'll have to go out and take a look at that and see how we can uh, uh, bring that in. And even for online training, that's always a, a great opportunity uh, for um, for uh, engagement as well. And here are just, uh, you know, and, and why people voluntarily leave an organization. Uh, you know, we say our, uh, people leave their managers and, and not the organization. And when we think about that, you know, as we look at our team members, are they continuing to use their strengths every day? Uh, do they have the opportunity uh, to grow? You know, am I getting stretch assignments? Uh, do I understand what my career path is going to look like? Uh, you know, sometimes people are no longer enthusiastic about the mission of the organization. So, how are you helping to make help them make those connections? What you know, what's my purpose for getting up in the morning? What's my purpose for coming to work? How do my values align with the values of the organization? How do my how does my personal mission statement align with the mission of the organization? And then right now, too, with a lot of uncertainty, people are uh, you know they lack that confidence in the organization's future. And you as a leader, what can you do to help uh, ensure people as best you can? Obviously, on certain times, we can't necessarily promise people, uh, but the more transparent we can be, the more trust that we can develop with our team members, the better chance we have of people understanding the strength of the organization and where the, the, the future of the organization lies and where their future with the organization lies as well. Uh, again, as I talked about, you know, making sure people feel connected to that purpose uh, and the future of the organization. Uh, team members as a group uh, that they support and understand one one another. <clears throat> you know, what are they doing? You know, how are they connecting? Are you giving them time uh, without you being present uh, to work together, to brainstorm together, uh, to make those connections together as well? What are you doing to encourage? people to support one another. And, and that goes back to if there are people who don't work together on a normal basis, uh, when we spend that first 5, 10, 15 minutes of a meeting and people get to talk about what's happening in their lives and what they're doing, they make those connections again with each other. And so when there are uh, times when maybe a team member needs some additional support, uh, they, they have that relationship built and people are more apt to raise their hand and reach out to that person for support. Uh, and this is really important, right? What are my expectations? What What are you expecting of me now that that I'm working uh, remotely? And, and are those expectations, you know, realistic? Uh, and then how can I do my best work now and in the future? You know, are uh, is the work that they're doing is it flexible enough as as people continue to have you know their kids at home? You know, what are you know what are you doing there? Um, to line that, you know, sometimes people like, yep, yep, you, you got to punch in from eight to five, and that's it. Uh, you know, is that really realistic? I mean, even when we were, we weren't working remotely for many organizations, they really provided people that flexibility in their schedule as long as the job uh, got done. So, what are those expectations? What are those parameters? And and can you be innovative within your organization uh, to provide people? Uh, the opportunities to be successful in their job as, as well as continue to take care of their family and what's needed at that time. So here are seven questions. Uh, people have asked me like, well, you know, what does that look like? How do I engage my people uh, and find out? And here are some really um, basic questions. I think these are open-ended questions. Hey, you know, how is life out, outside of work? Uh, you know, and, and I, as I alluded to earlier, you know, notice something you know, on their wall or make or make a comment, ask them about about the weekend. Uh, how's your workload going? And make sure that they're feeling comfortable with that workload. Uh, is there anything taking you outside of normal of normal hours? You know, are you finding yourself working a lot more hours than normal? If so, why? Right. Let's start. Let's start digging into that and tell me more. I uh, share with me what's going on. Uh, you know, um, when are they starting and stopping work? Uh, are they working after hours and are they working uh, on weekends? That's not part of flex time. And and that can happen where, where people, because now work is at home and they feel like they need to be working all the time because they haven't been able to figure out, 
you know, how to separate their home life from the, from the work now is already challenging for some people uh, when we weren't working remotely, uh, but it can be even more challenging now. So, you know, how are you um, checking in on that? <clears throat> you know, are they are they good at prioritizing their work and how are they prioritizing that work? Uh, for those of you who might be familiar with the Eisenhower method, if not, uh, Google it. It's basically a four box and you look at the urgency and, and the importance of that work and it goes into one of those quadrants and it really helps you to, to figure out, you know, what should I really be doing now? What are those big rocks uh, that need to get done? Uh, and so I have time to, to put out the fires. And then what are some things maybe I should be delegating or saying no to? And those are gonna be in that, that bottom um, quadrant. Uh, what can I do? What can we do to make our meetings better? Uh, that can be that can be difficult. We just found out we can do Kahoot. Uh, but team members might have some really uh, great ideas of what we can do to make those uh, uh, those meetings better. And and again, as we talked about earlier, you know, waiting and letting people answer questions. Do they have that that opportunity to to participate? Uh, how up to date do you feel with regard to what's happening? Uh, with our team and with our organization, you know, how are those channels? You know, your communication channels are they are they getting to the people that they need to get to in time? And I see I am going really slow here. Um, how might you might improve uh, team interaction and collaboration? And what uh, what do you enjoy most about uh, doing at work? And I'm going to continue, but but please share in the chat. You know, what questions you might ask your team uh, if they're having uh, when you have meetings with them, just to find out you know how engaged they are. And uh, a lot of the work for the large group is very similar to that small group. Have your cameras on. Take that time to uh, um, connect personally. Use the tools like we talked about, Kahoot, whiteboard, chats, all of those, making sure that you continue to use those. Uh, purposely engage. And this is that asking questions, calling on team members, being careful, uh, um, you know, comfortable with the silence. Right? So very, it's very similar to large groups as well as the small groups. The one thing that I do want to share that, uh, while we have time yet is make sure you have a clear agenda, appoint that producer, set time limits and stick to those and have the breaks. And then make sure you share your screen, screen whenever possible. Uh, one of the things I really want to go over really quickly is when you have a meeting where uh, maybe there's four or five people in one group and then maybe you have three or four or five people who are working remotely. Uh, and I learned this when I was doing education the community colleges and I had uh, people in different sites is that immediately at the start of the meeting I would call on one or two of the people in those remote uh, locations and get them involved and I always made sure that I stopped the people who are in the room with me and I would call on the people who are working remotely otherwise it's so easy for us to disengage because the six people or five people who are present in the room are taking all that time because they're connecting with each other and they forget that there's people on those other monitors. So that's a really, uh, really, really important uh, thing to think about as you continue to work with your team members. Over communicate, make sure you're asking for sign off and then follow up with notes. Uh, here's here's uh, what we did for my team at Christmas time. We did a murder mystery from murdermysteryco.com. And so that's uh, my team, all in our, our characters for, uh, for, for uh, the murder mystery that we did. And watch the industry sites for additional uh, information on how you can in connect and engage. Take a chance and have and have fun. And my challenge to you is think about what will you start, stop, or continue to do in the next 10 days to demonstrate your commitment to engaging to your team members. And we have one minute left for Q&A. I am so sorry. <laughs> Usually I'm short on time. Well, that's okay. We got some good feedback uh, during the chat, so I, I'm glad you put those questions out there and we got some good responses. Uh, Jen wanted me to let you know that we'll uh, put all of those responses uh, into the information she sent out to everybody. So you'll get that if you didn't take notes uh, on Kahoot.com and some of the other ideas that uh, that were were offered by our our uh, our attendees today. So thanks for all that input. Um, I just have one question, Karen, that has that has kind of come up and 
and one other comment. So I'm going to start with a comment first. So you talk about your background and 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 since we're on camera all the time and and I'm in my home office here, I actually didn't like the background of my home office, so I did change it up. And and the game that I played for that was uh, was how long would it take for people to actually notice? Um, <laughs> and, and for some people, that it took them. Um, you know, no time at all. And then for people like Jeff, he probably still hasn't noticed. Um, <laughs> yep. But but the question I have is, you know, we're we're talking to the to the group today, or at least in my interpretation of it, is that we're talking to them as as business leaders and engaging their teams. What if the team is really engaged, but the business leader isn't and doesn't want to participate? How can the team work work in reverse and and get that uh, get the business leader to jump in? Yeah, that's that's a great question because they have to have that that psychological safety and that connection with with their leader. Uh, my recommendation to a team member would be is identify the team member that has the best relationship, you know, with that leader and then uh, provide that feedback. You know, hopefully the leader is seeking feedback, whether it's through a 360 uh, engagement feedback or is is soliciting feedback as leaders should do and then and then offering that right and, and it could be hey note we miss you you know as a, as a as a team right we love seeing you and, and we, miss you. we want you to be part of this what can we do you know do we need to fix our schedule in order for you to participate right so it's coming from uh, a place of, of positive intent right good intentions rather than like hey you're a bad boss because you're not engaging with us rather than hey you're a leader. We want to see you. We want to be part of you. Um, we want you to know that the work that we're doing is really important. You know, what do we need to do to uh, help you be engaged with us, right? So it's a it's a, a different way of coming at that and 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 letting them um, have that feedback. Great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Jeff, any other questions from your end? No, I got a lot of good. Well, one, I I know I want to go to Alicia's party. Because they, they look like they're a blast. I mean, her meetings just look like party. Uh, I took a ton of notes. I, I got a lot of really good tips. And um, I know we're over time. I, uh, my uh, one question that I had was you had mentioned the cards with questions. And if you do come across that, maybe we could include that in the email that follows. So I would love to have the, those cards. I didn't, want, I didn't want to make too much noise, but it's called unzip. Uh, Unzip, un, unzip it. U N Z I P I T, uh, and it's uh, if you go like the training warehouse, trainingwarehouse.com, you'll see these, and then and then it's just it's cards, and you literally this one is uh, uh, inspiring, um, inspire creativity by. So there's some about leadership, there's some about uh, teamwork, and and so what I would do is I would just literally pick pick a card uh, for each team member and I'd say, okay, Jeff, you need to answer the question, making decisions is hard when, and then you would answer that question. So, and so that's how I would do that. So I, again, it was early on during COVID and we weren't sure what different technology we were gonna use for engagement. And so I just grabbed, I just grabbed the stuff I would use in a normal in-person meeting and rather than each person grabbing the card, I would be really transparent, right? Be on the camera and say, okay, this is your card. And uh, so they knew I wasn't setting people up for like what question they were going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. That's, That's great, a great yeah. presentation. Yeah, thank you, Karen, very much. Um, what? Any any last words? No, just you know, just try it, right? Be be humble, be willing to take the chance. Uh, you know, we we struggled when we first started using WebEx, but we got through it, and now you know now it's just second nature. So it's just like any other change. It can be really difficult at first. We just got to keep on being resilient and just and plug through and, and get through it and, and you figure out how to use the tools. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Karen, for, for doing this today. Thanks to all of you for attending. Uh, once again, watch your email. Jen will get this out uh, to you soon. And uh, if you have any other comments for us, we do a survey. Uh, we really appreciate your, your responses to those surveys. It helps us guide or helps guide us to uh, future presentations. So we really want to make this all about what you want and want to hear more about. So please keep those coming in. And uh, we look forward to talking with you again here in the next couple of weeks. All right, Jeff, Karen, be well, everybody. Have a great yep. rest of the week. Yep, you thanks. as well. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.